We've discussed addressing hyperpigmentation on your face, but what about hyperpigmentation on your body? Things like dark knees and elbows and armpits. Today, that's what we're going to discuss. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board-certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we delve in deeper, I want to make a note that oftentimes hyperpigmentation of the skin folds and darkening of the elbows and knees is physiologic, meaning that it's completely normal, especially in people who have darker skin tones. And if you are not bothered by your hyperpigmentation, there's absolutely no reason that you have to treat it. But it is something that I get asked about quite a bit, so I wanted to address address it and give people safe options. However, there are also times that hyperpigmentation is not normal or physiologic and there are specific causes, so I do want to talk a little bit about that as well. As you can imagine, one of the most common causes of hyperpigmentation is excess UV damage, and this usually causes hyperpigmentation on exposed body sites. So of course, this is not going to cause hyperpigmentation of your groin or of your armpits, but it can contribute to hyperpigmentation elsewhere. Another really common cause of hyperpigmentation, and there's actually hyperpigmentation in the name, is something called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which essentially means some type of inflammatory insult to the skin, leading to deposition of melanin or pigment in the skin afterward. And it doesn't have to be a ton of inflammation. It can be little things like an acne blemish that leaves a dark spot behind or a mosquito bite that leaves a dark spot behind. We also will often see this after skin trauma, like little cuts and scrapes leading to pigment deposition in the skin. Another cause of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is allergic reaction. So if you're using something on your skin that you're having an allergy to after that initial redness or maybe swelling of the skin goes away, you can be left with dark marks. And the whole reason this happens is when you have inflammation in the skin, there are certain inflammatory molecules that stimulate your melanocytes or your pigment producing cells to kind of overproduce. And those who have deeper skin tones or more melanated skin they don't have more melanocytes, but their melanocytes can be more sensitive to these triggers. Hormone shifts are another common cause of hyperpigmentation. Oftentimes in pregnancy, people will develop darkening of their skin folds, but also other areas like the nipples and the genitalia. So those are some of the main causes that lead to excess pigment or melanin deposition in the skin. But the other reason that the skin can appear hyperpigmented is due to thickening of the skin without much excess pigment being there. I would say by far and away, the most common cause of this is just friction. So rubbing of the skin repeatedly can cause the skin to thicken up. Think of it like it's trying to sort of protect itself. And if you have a deeper skin tone, that will make the skin appear much darker in those areas. For example, just last week I had a patient come in and she had hyperpigmentation on her ankle and she was asking like, why is this happening to me? I don't really do anything there. I don't scratch that area. But when she sits, she tucks her leg up under herself and that area repeatedly gets rubbed and so it got darker. This darkening and thickening of the skin is also seen in a medical condition called acanthosis nigricans. We see this in people who have diabetes, or are even pre-diabetic, it's a sign of insulin resistance. And we also see it in people who have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. And again, this is really due to just thickening of the skin. There might be a little bit more melanin or pigment there, but that thickening layers and layers and layers of skin makes the skin look darker. So now that we understand some of the main causes of body skin hyperpigmentation, let's move on to the treatments. When you are treating hyperpigmentation, and this really goes for if you're treating your face or your body skin, you need to be patient. The skin takes about 30 to 60 days to turn over or renew itself. So you can imagine if you have pigment sitting in those upper layers of your skin, or even if that skin is thicker there, it needs to go through a few cycles of turnover before you see those improvements. So when I'm counseling my patients on treating hyperpigmentation, we usually set a timeline of three to six months before we expect to see improvements. I also find that fall and winter is a better time to treat hyperpigmentation. You just have reduced UV exposure. And since we know ultraviolet radiation is a trigger for hyperpigmentation, it's just better to have less of that when you go into treatment. Also, some of the treatments I talk about involve exfoliation or the use of certain exfoliating acids that can sensitize you to the sun. So starting your treatments when you're going to have less sun exposure also makes sense. And then when we're strategizing about treating hyperpigmentation, there are really four main tenets that we focus on. One is using products that inhibit the melanin pathway. So your melanocytes are your pigment producing cells and they make melanin. And there are little enzymes in there that you can augment or affect so that they produce less pigment. The second thing we focus on doing is exfoliation and removing the dull or thickened skin layers. And something to keep in mind is we wanna do this rather slowly because inflammation and irritation can worsen pigment. So we don't wanna be 
be too aggressive here. The third thing we want to do when treating hyperpigmentation is to increase cellular turnover. So like I discussed before, the skin cells exist in many different layers and the faster those are cycling, the faster you can see improvements. And the fourth tenet of treating hyperpigmentation is protection, protecting your skin from things like UV radiation, as well as frictional forces and irritation. I'm really going to focus on specific products to treat hyperpigmentation, but here are some of the main hyperpigmentation fighting ingredients that you want to look for. Now this list is not comprehensive and if you want a more in-depth discussion of hyperpigmentation fighting ingredients, I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to that. But some of the main ingredients that I look for are hydroquinone, alpha arbutin, licorice root extract, vitamin C, topical retinoids like tretinoin and retinol, as well as things like kojic acid, niacinamide, azelaic acid, and exfoliating acids like alpha hydroxy acids such as glycolic acid, lactic acid, and mandelic acid. Salicylic acid, which is a beta hydroxy acid, can also be helpful with hyperpigmentation. Before I get into products that you can buy at the drugstore or online, I do want to talk about prescription medications that can be helpful for hyperpigmentation. And of course, I could not do a video on hyperpigmentation without discussing hydroquinone, the gold standard when it comes to fighting excess pigmentation in the skin. So hydroquinone is something called a tyrosinase inhibitor. And tyrosinase is the main enzyme that leads to melanin or pigment production in the skin. So when you cut that off, you reduce that excess pigment. Now hydroquinone used to be available over the counter in the United States and no longer is available that way. And that's not because hydroquinone is dangerous, but rather because it was being used incorrectly or compounded with other things that were problematic like mercury. When we prescribe hydroquinone in clinic, we can prescribe a wide range of strengths, starting as low as two percent and going all the way up to 12 or even 16 percent. Also, I will often compound hydroquinone with other pigment fighting ingredients, which I'll talk about in a second, like tretinoin and kojic acid and vitamin C to enhance the overall efficacy of that topical product. Whenever you're prescribed something like this, it's always really important to discuss it with your healthcare provider about how they want you to use it. But I will often instruct my patients when they are treating body skin with hydroquinone to use the product up to twice daily. And we usually do that for anywhere between six and 12 weeks before we check back in. Because hydroquinone can be absorbed systemically through the skin, I generally don't recommend applying it to really large body surface areas. But if someone's struggling with dark armpits or dark knees, or they have specific areas of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, that is absolutely okay to use hydroquinone in those areas. And I know I discussed earlier how hormone shifts can lead to a lot of hyperpigmentation in pregnancy and in that postpartum period, but I do not recommend the use of hydroquinone during either of these times. And then another medication that I will often prescribe for people with hyperpigmentation is tretinoin or retinoic acid. Like I mentioned, tretinoin can be compounded with other pigment fighting ingredients, but it also helps with hyperpigmentation on its own due to the fact that it increases cellular turnover as well as inhibits melanin production and dispersion of those melanin granules within the skin. Usually when I'm prescribing tretinoin to treat body hyperpigmentation, I will use higher potencies because body skin tends to be a little less sensitive. So I will often start with tretinoin 0.1%, whereas when I'm usually prescribing tretinoin for the face, I'm starting at a 0.025% concentration. And again, you're always going to want to consult with your dermatologist about how they want you to use these products, I usually advise my patients to start three nights a week and work up to nightly as they tolerate it because tretinoin can be a little bit irritating to the skin. So those are the main prescriptions I use to fight hyperpigmentation, but let's talk about things that you can buy and use at home without a prescription that are still really effective. So first up is Adapalene 0.1% gel. This is a topical retinoid, so it sort of fits in the same category as tretinoin, but you can get it over the counter under the brand name Differin or Effaclar by La Roche-Posay. And I would have my patients apply this the same way they would apply topical tretinoin. So to the entire hyperpigmented area, ideally nightly. Another body hyperpigmentation fighter that I really like is kojic acid, specifically in the form of kojic acid soap. You can use this on hyperpigmented armpits, groin folds, as well as if you have areas of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on the body, for example, from things like mosquito bites or acne blemishes. I really like the Kojisan Facial Beauty Soap, and I know face is in the name, and you can use kojic acid on the face as well, but these beauty bars I really like for use in the shower. You can start by using something like this a few nights a week. The interesting thing about kojic acid is that it tends to tingle when you apply it, so just know that's totally normal. Another product that I absolutely love for body hyperpigmentation is something called Meliderm by the company Savant. This is one of my favorite hydroquinone-free pigment fighters because it has so many different pigment fighting ingredients. So this has pigment fighting ingredients like 
azelaic acid, bearberry extract, licorice root extract, niacinamide, vitamin C, and a whole bunch of others. I'll, I'll put them all here. I actually talked about this Meloderm product in my melasma video, and so many of you have messaged me since then saying that this was really helpful for your melasma, but that you ended up using it for your body pigmentation, and it helped a lot there too. This is also really nice because it doesn't have exfoliating acids, and although those can be really helpful for fighting hyperpigmentation, they can also be irritating. So this is a little bit more gentle for use in things like the groin folds and armpits, where skin can be a little bit more sensitive. Another super easy to use and affordable product to fight body hyperpigmentation is the glycolic acid toner by The Ordinary. This is a 7% glycolic acid toner. And like I mentioned before, these alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid help slough off those top layers of dead skin cells that can be hyperpigmented. So this comes sort of with a little pore spout, but one hack I've seen on this is you can actually buy off of Amazon a little spray top and that makes applying this to larger body surface areas a lot easier and helps you get things like your back if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation there. This can be used on the elbows, the knees, the armpits, the groin. But again, remember if you're applying acids, which can be irritating into the folds, that enhances their absorption when they're put into the fold. So you just have to be careful and kind of start slow and low with these. What we don't want is you trying to treat your hyperpigmentation and then causing additional irritation or inflammation that makes your pigmentation worse. Another product with glycolic acid that I really love is the Glytone Exfoliating Body Lotion. And of course, you do not need to use a glycolic acid toner and a glycolic acid body lotion. But what I've found through talking to people and just treating patients over the years is everyone has a preference for how they like to use certain ingredients. So I think these are both good options depending on what you prefer. Now, I know there are a lot of glycolic acid body lotions on the market. The reason I'm including this one, and I know it's a little bit pricier than others, is because it has so much glycolic acid in it It is really strong. And for some people, this is going to be too intense, but for others, for people who don't have sensitive skin, using a higher potency is going to make it more effective. Like when I use this body lotion, I definitely appreciate a sting or a little bit of spiciness that goes away, but just expect that. Another body treatment that I think is super effective is the Topical Slather Exfoliating Body Serum. This has a bunch of brightening and lightening ingredients like lactic acid, retinol, niacinamide, and urea, which helps with skin cell turnover. I also really like this one because it's quite gentle So say you want some of those exfoliating effects of the Glytone body lotion or the glycolic acid toner from The Ordinary, but you need something that's a little more geared towards sensitive skin, start with this. So everything I just talked about, you could use anywhere on your body, but I am going to talk about some specific products for the groin and armpits, just because those are sort of special, more sensitive areas. First up is the Saltaire 5% AHA Serum Deodorant. I'm not usually a huge fan of deodorants. I tend to prefer antiperspirants, which actually stop sweating, but I like the use of a deodorant to fight hyperpigmentation. So this is formulated with a multi-acid blend of lactic acid and mandelic acid, as well as polyhydroxy acids, which are very gentle exfoliators, but also help with hydration. And I know this was probably designed for the armpits, but you can really use it anywhere on the body. And I think using it in the groin, particularly before or after shaving is extra helpful with addressing things like grown hairs and the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that can occur because of them. Now, if you want something a little more potent to fight hyperpigmentation, I recommend the Topicals High Roller Ingrown Tonic. So this is a little roller that you can apply after shaving. And the whole point is to prevent ingrown hairs, but because it has glycolic acid and salicylic acid and niacinamide, it also has this lightening and brightening effect that can address both the hyperpigmentation that can form in the armpits and groin, as well as the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that can result from ingrown hairs. So for this product, it's not just about preventing the hyperpigmentation that already exists, but preventing a thing that can cause hyperpigmentation, ingrown hairs. And on that note of prevention, let's pivot to talk about things you can do to prevent hyperpigmentation from forming in the first place. So number one is sun protection, protecting against UV radiation, which is one of the strongest drivers of hyperpigmentation. It honestly kills me when patients come in for the treatment of hyperpigmentation disorders like melasma or irregular pigmentation on the body, and they have never worn sunscreen. So of course, sunscreen is going to be my number one recommendation for preventing hyperpigmentation, but also the use of sun protective clothing and hats. Like I briefly mentioned before, there are certain exfoliating products, particularly anything that contains an alpha hydroxy acid, that's going to make you more sun sensitive. So it absolutely does not make sense to be using those products and then not protecting your skin afterward. I definitely have a few favorite body sunscreens, so I'll talk about those in a second. But I also think if you have some face sunscreens that you've purchased and you didn't really love them, using them up on the body is a great way to make them not go to waste. One of my all-time favorite body sunscreens, and I talk about it all the time on this channel, is the Banana Boat Light as Air SPF 50 sunscreen. The reason I like this so much is it has a really nice light 
fruity floral scent. So it doesn't have that traditional sunscreen smell. And I know if you're applying sunscreen to large areas on your body, sometimes you don't want to walk around smelling like you're going to the pool or to the beach. So really, I just think of this like body lotion. And if I'm going to be out in the sun and my arms or legs are going to be exposed, this pretty much always goes on me. Another body sunscreen I really like is the Eucerin Daily Hydration Cream. This is SPF 30, and it's really meant to be like a body lotion that happens to have sun protection. Both this and the Banana Boat are incredibly affordable. This is nice because it doesn't have fragrance. And sometimes people will ask, well, is SPF 30 really enough? Absolutely. One thing that's important to note about this Eucerin sunscreen though, is that it's not water resistant compared to the Banana Boat one, which is. So I prefer Banana Boat for outdoor hiking activities or being in the pool or things where I'm going to be sweaty. Whereas I would use this more on a day to day. This is also fragrance free, which is extra great for sensitive skin. Another way that you can prevent body hyperpigmentation is with regular moisturization of the skin. I find that so many people under moisturize, but when you're moisturizing regularly, it not only improves your skin barrier function and your skin health, but it makes your skin look better too. With a moisturizer, you're going to want to apply it at least once a day to the hyperpigmented areas on your body. But if you can use something twice a day, that's even better. And if you're struggling with something like darkening or hyperpigmentation of the knuckles on your hands, you're actually going to want to apply moisturizer moisturizer or some type of hand cream every single time you wash your hands. My go-to hand cream is called Gloves in a Bottle. I find that it's really nourishing, but doesn't leave a greasy residue or finish. One of my absolute favorite moisturizers is from my brand Prequel. It's the Urea Repair Moisturizing Milk. So I actually designed this product to be safe for use on the face and the body, so it's very convenient. But this has 10% urea, which acts as a humectant to draw water and hydration to the surface of the skin, as well as have a mild keratolytic or exfoliating effect without being irritating or sensitive. Urea can also help with penetration of other topical ingredients that you may be using, which is amazing if you're using some of the other hyperpigmentation fighters that I've discussed in this video. Now, if you want more of a straight up body moisturizer with no active ingredients, I also really like the Necessaire Body Lotion. This is a really mid-weight, easy to apply body lotion that I think works great in a lot of different routines and with a lot of different skin types. And then of course, if your skin is not too sensitive, you can use something like the Glytone Glycolic Acid Body Lotion that I talked about earlier in the video regularly. Aside from sun protection and moisturization, another way to reduce hyperpigmentation on the skin is to limit repeated frictional forces. So like I mentioned earlier, I had that patient who kept sitting on her ankle and so she developed a callus there, but some people lean on their elbow when they're working and so they get hyperpigmentation in that area, or they can have just repeated rubbing within their armpits or between their thighs. So essentially my first tip is if you're noticing hyperpigmentation in certain areas, and especially if it's not symmetrical, is to kind of think to yourself, am I doing anything that's increasing friction in this area that might be subconscious? Another thing you can do is buy something called duoderm bandages. These are really thin hydrocolloid bandages that essentially act as barrier protection. I recommend getting the extra thin version because it's almost undetectable on the skin and they come in a variety of sizes. I think these are amazing if someone has an area where they chronically rub or itch. So for my patients with eczema, for example, and they're constantly scratching one particular area on their arm, or if I have a patient who's chronically picking something on the back of their hand that's leading to hyperpigmentation, I will actually have them use one of these bandages every single day to act as a barrier to friction. I also think that using body balms to reduce chafing can be really helpful. My personal favorite is Body Glide. So this is essentially like a little stick similar to a mini deodorant that you can apply to any areas where you experience chafing. So that could be the inner thighs, that could be the armpits. A lot of my runners will actually get nipple chafing from their shirts and so you can apply it to those areas as well. Body Glide is sweat and water resistant, so it's great if you're an athlete or you do a lot of sweaty or water activities, and it's highly portable so you can reapply as needed. In addition to reducing friction that way, you may also want to consider wearing loose clothing. Sometimes if you're wearing tight-fitting clothing, it can cause repeated rubbing of certain areas and again lead to hyperpigmentation. And then another way to prevent hyperpigmentation caused by things like repeated shaving, which is a frictional force, or the ingrown hairs that result because of that is to do laser hair removal. Now I know that's not a feasible option for everyone, but I've had so many patients have reduced hyperpigmentation in the beard area, in the armpits, and in the groin after doing laser hair removal, because then they're able to reduce or even stop shaving altogether, which was the cause of the hyperpigmentation in the first place. One other note I want to make about preventing hyperpigmentation relates to physical exfoliants, things like body scrubs or using something aggressive like a loofah or a washcloth to try to scrub at hyperpigmentation. Like I mentioned before, irritation and inflammation can lead to darkening of skin. So when you're using a physical exfoliant, you need to use it very carefully and lightly. And it's really why I prefer chemical exfoliants for those who have hyperpigmentation. 
so many times I've had patients go, I don't know why this is getting worse. I'm rubbing, I'm scrubbing at it. I'm trying to remove those excess dead skin cell layers, but really you're just causing trauma to the skin that's leading to additional skin thickening and hyperpigmentation. And then of course, if these at-home treatments aren't working for you, you can always consider in-office treatments to treat hyperpigmentation. Probably one of the most common things I do in my practice to treat hyperpigmentation on the body, whether that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne on the back or dark groin folds or armpits or chemical peels. But with chemical peels, you have to be careful because again, these can cause inflammation and irritation as well. My go-to acid for hyperpigmentation is actually salicylic acid because it can be a little bit more gentle and is less likely to cause rebound hyperpigmentation. Glycolic acid can also be used in this way. And I know I talked a lot about at-home glycolic acid products, but you can also do glycolic acid peels in an office setting where it's safe. And sometimes I'll have patients come in asking about lasers for the treatment of body hyperpigmentation. And what I've found is that lasers are not as effective for treating body hyperpigmentation as they are for treating hyperpigmentation on the face. If you're struggling with body hyperpigmentation, I hope you found this video helpful. If you use any of the products that I recommend, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, please share your favorite body hyperpigmentation treatments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.